This package also includes other key priorities. It continues our strong support of Israel, combats the flow of illegal drugs, and fu fully funds medical research for cancer and chronic diseases. Against all odds, House Republicans refocused spending the Amer America's most crucial need of home and abroad. I urge my colleagues to support this bill, and I reserve the balance of my time. This gentlewoman reserves. Gentleman from Texas is recognized. Thank the speaker. Well, here we are again. The swamp is back in full force. We have a thousand page bill of $1.2 trillion filled with all manners of spending priorities that are at odds with the American people. That's what we have in front of us. This bill is over a thousand pages long. It contains hundreds of pages of report language, 1,400 earmarks, and we've had about 24 hours to review it. That is not the way to do business. And the American people and American families are the ones left holding the bag. This is business as usual in the swamp. And here's the deal to my Republican colleagues. You will own every single bit of this. If you vote for this bill, you own it. DHS funding contingent on signing HR2 into law, that's what we did last year to make sure our border would be secure. That is punted, so you own it. Defunding Alejandro Mayorkas, we did that in our bill. This punts that. It's no longer there. You own it. Prohibiting mass parole and release of illegal aliens via the CBP-1 app. We did that in our bill last year. This bill gets rid of it. You own it. You own the continued mass parole of, Republic, of, of uh, illegal aliens into our country. You own that. That's the truth. And it was mass parole that led to a Venezuelan gang member coming into the United States and killing Lake and Riley. And you can't go campaign, my Republican colleagues cannot go campaign against mass parole and use the name of Lake and Riley because you pass a bill in her name when you fund the very policies that lead to her death. I hear all this that we're going to increase beds, ice beds. We're going to increase the numbers for Border Patrol. The increased numbers for Border Patrol will process more illegal aliens. The increased number of beds for ICE will not be used because there's memos in place by Alejandro Mayorkas, whom we impeached and whom this bill will fund. Those ICE beds will not be filled. They won't be used. And we know it. We set out to prohibit DHS from fast-tracking asylum. This bill doesn't do that. We set out to make sure this border would be secure and you could end what happened yesterday in Texas where 100 illegal aliens bum-rushed our border, rolled over the Texas National Guard, fled into this country, and went to Border Patrol to get released into the United States. That is what this bill continues to fund. And any of my Republican colleagues who want to spend this year campaigning against open borders... It's a laugh, because today, if you vote for this abomination of a bill, you will be voting to fund it. You will be voting to fund the very policies that you will campaign against. I reserve. The gentleman reserves. The gentlewoman from Texas is recognized. Madam Speaker, I ask for unanimous consent that all members have five legislative days to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous material on the measure under consideration. Without objection. I ask unanimous consent to yield 10 minutes of my time to the gentleman from Connecticut, Mr. DeLauro, and that she be allowed to control the time. Without objection, I now recognize a gentlewoman from Connecticut, DeLauro, to control the next 10 minutes. Madam Speaker, I'm delighted and relieved to be finally closing out fiscal year 2024. And for that, I want to thank Chairwoman Kay Granger, Chair Patty Murray, Vice Chair Susan Collins. I am proud to have made history with such experienced appropriators. 2024 marks the first time negotiations on government funding have been led on all four corners by women. 
I have many others to thank, subcommittee ranking members and chairs, staff on both sides of the aisle, and I will be submitting these names for the record. I strongly support the bipartisan bill which funds the majority of the United States government. This bill sides with the hardworking majority of Americans. It helps to lower the cost of living. It protects women's rights and access to reproductive health care. It reinforces America's global leadership, and it helps our communities be safe and secure. I am pleased that Democrats and Republicans again united to make government work for the people of this country. Like the funding bill we passed earlier this month, this legislation does not have everything either side may have wanted. But I am satisfied that many of the extreme cuts and the policies proposed by House Republicans were rejected. I am enormously proud that we are providing an increase of $1 billion for childcare, for Head Start, expanding access to quality and affordable child care for hardworking families. We increased Title I education funding, protecting 224,000 teachers' jobs House Republicans tried to eliminate. I am also pleased that we successfully defeated every one of the Republicans' extreme policy riders in the Labor HHS bill. In this package, we prioritize the men and women in our armed services and their families by securing pay and allowance increases of over 5 percent, the highest increase in decades. We invest in global health and support 12,000 special immigrant visas for Afghans that assisted the United States and critically we strength helped we strengthen and critically we strengthened our border security. I urge swift package of this passage, and I look forward to moving on how we can best serve the American people in the fiscal year 2025. I reserve the balance of my time. The gentlewoman reserves. Gentleman from Texas is it rec recognized. I would yield 90 seconds to the gentlelady from Florida. Gentlewoman is now recognized. Madam Speaker, I rise in opposition today to speak in a in, um, against the current omnibus that we are seeing hitting the floor today. You know, this administration, many people on both sides talk about how they want to champion black and brown people in this country. And that's a direct quote from a recent press, com uh, press release from the Biden administration. But the fact is, is that this omnibus, um, this government being open and allowing for open borders is doing nothing but actually hurting those communities. What we are seeing right now at the border is a rise in crime. We are seeing these very communities being impacted by the rise in gang violence. And frankly, it's been disgusting to watch crony capitalists push the import importation of cheap labor. I don't know if anyone's recently witnessed what happened with Tyson Farms, but they actually fired Americans to hire immigrant workers, aka illegals, after in September September 25th of 2023, they were probed by the federal government over employment of migrant children who likely washed the bloody floors and razor sharp machines. I mean, why would anyone want to continue to fund a government that A, is complicit in this, but B, is also responsible for losing 85,000 migrant children? The fact is, is that we cannot continue down this path. It is hurting all people. I think that if you want to say and you want to claim to protect minorities, then you need to ensure that you are putting Americans first and not simply just using that as a way to get elected, meanwhile stabbing Americans in the back and hurting our communities. And with that, Madam Speaker, I yield the rest of my time. General Woman yields. Reserve. Recognize a gentleman, a gentlewoman from Texas. I yield to the gentleman from California, the chairman of the Defense Subcommittee, Mr. Calvert, for three minutes. The gentleman is recognized. Madam Speaker, I rise today in strong support of the negotiated appropriations package. Today is zero hour. We're out of time. Today's vote may be the most consequential of your lifetime. Right now, our troops around the world are facing multiple threats. Our supremacy on land, sea, air, and space is being challenged, and our allies are under attack. I could go through a long list of vital programs and funding included in this bill. The wins for our troops, the historic funding for innovation and counter-drug activities, the focus on countering China. The time is short and the stakes have never been higher. For the members who are considering voting against the bill due to objections and other titles, and are under the impression that this bill uh, fails, 
will have another chance to vote for a full year defense bill, I want to be very clear. This is it. Every member must understand the impact of not passing this package. The only other option will be a full year continuing resolution, which will devastate our national security and put our country at risk. A CR will cut defense spending by $27 billion and trigger additional cuts from sequestration. This is something that has not happened in the history of this country and will cut our military off at the knees in the midst of the most dangerous period we have seen since World War II. A CR maintains policies negotiated by the last Congress, eliminates all member priorities from the bill, gives the Biden administration the freedom to shift in appropriations as they see fit. Simply put, we will cede all congressional authority and oversight on spending to the Biden administration. A CR would be an abdication of our responsibility and to our military and to this body. A no vote is a vote for China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, and Hamas. A vote yes for our men and women in uniform and for all Americans and for our country. I yield back. And yields. The gentlewoman from Connecticut is recognized. Madam Speaker, I yield one minute to the gentleman from New York, the distinguished Democratic leader, Mr. Jeffries. The gentleman is now recognized. I thank the distinguished general lady uh, from the great state of Connecticut for yielding. Uh, the Honorable Rosa DeLauro, and thank her for her extraordinary leadership throughout this process in getting us to this principled result. I thank all of the appropriators for their extraordinary work on the Democratic side and on the Republican side as part of the effort to complete the fiscal year 2024 appropriations. This hasn't been a perfect process, but we should never let the perfect be the enemy of the good. When it comes to solving problems on behalf of hardworking American taxpayers, and this is a good result for the American people, in terms of standing up for their health, their safety, their education, their national security protection, and of course, above all else, their economic well-being. A bipartisan process leading to a bipartisan result that will hopefully lay a foundation for us to continue to do the work of the American people together. Now, we've said from the very beginning of this Congress as Democrats that we will find bipartisan common ground with our Republican colleagues on any issue, whenever and wherever possible, as long as it will make life better for the American people. That's exactly what House Democrats continue to do. At the same time, we've said we will push back against extremism whenever necessary. We will always defend a woman's freedom to make her own reproductive health care decisions. We will always defend the gorgeous mosaic of the American people and push back against unnecessary attacks against diversity, equity, and inclusion. These are American values. We will always fight to protect and strengthen Social Security and Medicare, and we will always put people over politics. And we hope that that will continue, not just on the Democratic side, but together to solve problems for the American people. As soon as we complete this work, let us turn to our national security priorities and make sure that we don't abandon the people of Ukraine in their hour of greatest need as they fight for principles like democracy and freedom and truth and push back against autocracy, tyranny, and propaganda. America should always stand on the side of these principles like democracy and freedom and truth, and that means standing with the people of Ukraine. I thank once again the appropriators for their leadership in concluding this process I urge everybody to support this legislation, and I hope that as we move forward, and our promise to you, but more importantly to the American people, who expect that in this Congress we should have more common sense and less chaos. We should have more decency and less dysfunction, and more exceptionalism and less extremism. Our promise to you is that we will do our best to put people over politics 
and we hope that you will do the same. Vote yes on this bill, and I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields. Gentleman from Texas is now recognized. The gentlewoman reserves. Thank you. The Democrat leader talks about the mosaic. I assume by the mosaic that anyone who votes for this bill today will be supporting that we're talking about $156,000 for the Hartford Gay and Lesbian Health Collective, an organization self-described as champions of LGBTQIA equity and provides training in cultural competency and access to health care for LGBTQ youth, or $2 million in Oregon Clinic that provides hormone therapy for kids, or the $850,000 for gay senior housing in Massachusetts, or $400,000 for the Briar Patch Youth Services in Wisconsin that has gender-affirming clothing program for kids 18 to 13 to 18, or $400,000 to the Garden State Equality Education Fund, which helps minors transition genders, promote biological boys playing girls' sports, and using the same restrooms. I could go on and on. How about the million dollars for the Inner City Muslim Network, which calls for the destruction of Israel? That's what we're funding. That's precisely what we're funding in this legislation. So when the Democratic leader talks about a mosaic, that's what he's talking about. And my Republican colleagues who will campaign against it all year, they will, they're voting to fund it today. To be very clear, my Republican colleagues are voting to fund that so-called mosaic today, unless they choose the right path and vote against it. And my friend from California, when he talked about, oh, Oh, the horrors that will happen if we have a CR. Well, we shouldn't be here. This is the swamp acting what it does. Have government funding expire on the Friday before a two-week recess heading into Easter precisely to have the pressure of jet fumes so that the American people are the ones left holding the bag so that we, members of Congress, can go off to our codels, can go travel, can go do your fundraisers, can make sure you get home. But the ones left holding the bag are the, the American people. And when we talk about this, the game was given up. When we talk about defense, everything that is happening here is being done in the name of defense. Everything that you see. And talking about how our national security will be undermined. Well, tell me about national security in Texas. When you have the National Guard getting rolled over in El Paso. When you have Texans dying from fentanyl poisoning. When you have gangs and cartels operating in Texas. Talk to me about national security then. I'll yield 90 seconds to my friend from Arizona. I thank the, the gentleman, gentleman is for recognized. yielding. Thank you. So the, uh, the gentlelady from Connecticut said that in this bill, they were able to successfully reject Republicans' request for spending reductions and rejected Republicans' request for riders. And yet somehow the Republicans are going to vote for that? That's outrageous. She's right, though. She got the spending. She killed the writers. And when I hear that a vote for this is a vote for China, a vote, a vote, for, a vote against this is a vote for China, what you're really saying is a vote for this is a vote for Chinese terrorism because we've had over 30,000 illegal aliens from China come across the border with this border policy. This, you're, what you're going to get is you're voting actually to speed up the process of redistribution of illegal aliens who come in, because that's what the funding is going to go for. You're talking about beds. Those beds are going to go empty. Why? Because you're going to, re, you're going to ship these people out as soon as they get here. That's what's happening within 24 hours. So the crimes, the fentanyl death, the terrorist initiatives that are coming our way, you vote for this, you're funding it, you own it, you'll back. The gentleman yields. Gentlewoman from Texas is recognized. I yield to the gentleman from Florida, the chairman of the State and Foreign Operations Subcommittee, Mr. Diaz Millard. The gentleman from Florida is recognized for how much time are you giving him? Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. The gentleman thank is you, recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I want to thank the full committee chairwoman. Uh, Chairwoman Granger, and also the speaker for bringing us to this point. Now, let me tell you, I'm proud of the state and foreign operations portion of the bill that's, uh, that we're dealing with today. And let's talk about what the bill actually, let's get a little bit of, let's take out a little bit of the noise and the rhetoric. Let's talk about what's in the bill. It includes a 6% reduction from fiscal year 23. Uh, and let's be clear, we're at a critical moment in our history. One of our most important allies is in time of its greatest need, 
and this bill answers the call. It is the strongest pro-Israel state and foreign operations bill that we have ever seen. So let's talk about facts. It provides $3.3 billion in FMF, foreign military financing for Israel. Almost as importantly is what, what, uh, what is not funded in this bill. The bill prohibits funds to UNRWA, which has become, frankly, a de facto subsidiary of Hamas. The passage of this bill means not one additional dollar from American taxpayers will go fund this deeply flawed organization. But if we go to the CR, we're going to continue to fund it. The passage of this bill also prohibits funds for the anti-Semitic UN Commission of Inquiry against Israel. The passage of this bill means no funds can be used to delist, delist the Iranian Revolutionary Guard as a terrorist organization or to implement that infamous nuclear agreement with Iran. And another top priority, Madam, Chair, uh, Madam Speaker, is countering communist China. This bill includes 300 million foreign military financing for Taiwan, the first time ever in an appropriations bill that we have done that. The passage of this bill prohibits the use of foreign aid to repay Chinese debt. Also, another priority is strengthening our national security and supporting democracy around the world and defending human rights and human dignity. This bill increases funding to promote democracy and human rights in Cuba and establishes strict guidelines to ensure that the crucial funding supports the democratic opposition. That's for another minute. Two more minutes. Uh, Again, the, the gentleman is recognized for two more you. minutes. So it helps the, the democratic opposition and not the terrorist regime's chosen businesses. We also stand strongly against human trafficking, and particularly human trafficking of doctors. This bill also supports those struggling for freedom in our hemisphere, the most repressive areas in our hemisphere, those anti-American dictatorships in Venezuela and Nicaragua. Failure to pass, pass this bill, we lose provisions on the prohibition of funds uh, for encouraging organized organizations uh, facilitating or promoting migrant caravans to the United States. If this bill fails, and then those funding sources to, again, organizations that are promoting caravans of illegal folks in the United States will continue. That is factual. That's in this bill. If this legislation were not to pass, we lose the protection of free speech by limiting how funds can be used under the pretext of countering disinformation. If this legislation were not, were not to pass, we would go back to current law. We would lose the restrictions that only U.S. flags may be flown or displayed over a facility of the State Department. Madam Speaker, this bill reduces spending. It reprioritizes funding towards our vital national security interests and carries crucial limitations and smart policy changes to rein in the Biden administration. And if this bill were to fail, we are giving carte blanche to the Biden bureaucracy. It is a dramatic improvement, Madam Speaker, from current law. Before I close, let me thank the staff for their hard work. And again, Madam Speaker, this is an important bill at a crucial, critical time when American leadership is solely needed we're not getting it from the White House. This bill goes a long way to reestablish American leadership. I yield back. The gentleman yields. The gentlewoman from Connecticut is now recognized. Thank you. I yield one minute to the gentleman from Maryland, the distinguished ranking member of the Financial Services and General Government Subcommittee, Mr. Hoyer. The gentleman from Maryland is now recognized. One minute, too little time. The financial services bill is a good bill. It's the responsible alternative. Thirdly, it is ironic that the group that has made compromise the most difficult over the last year continues to oppose compromise. Legislative action is about compromise. This is a responsible compromise, as so many of the chairs of the subcommittees on the Republican side have said the alternative is the least responsible action that we could take. I urge my colleagues to vote for this bill as the responsible, effective alternative, notwithstanding the fact that the operations 
up to this point of the Appropriations Committee have not been what they ought to be, and we all understand that. But it is our collective failure caused, as I said, by a group who does not want compromise. Pass this bill. America needs this bill. It is a shame it's not going to be followed by passing aid for Ukraine. I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields. The gentleman from Texas is recognized. Well, the distinguished former majority leader brings up FSGG, the financial services bill. What he left out was the fact that we're going to give $200 million to the FBI for its new headquarters, even after Republicans touted in the last massive omnibus bill that we were cutting the FBI and then relied upon getting rid of an earmark in Alabama to claim that it was a bigger cut than it really is. Now what is happening to the American people? Guess what? The FBI is getting a brand new shiny headquarters despite running ramshot over the American people, spying on them. And by the way, we extended FISA to continue spying on the American people. We also failed to prohibit the Treasury from establishing a central bank digital currency. House Republicans passed that, but in this deal that was cut, we don't do that. Why? Why? Why would it be so abhorrent to ban a central bank digital currency? I yield 90 seconds to my friend from South Carolina. The gentleman from South Carolina is now recognized. I woke up this morning to a text from an elderly lady. We are under attack, Congressman. Can Congress do anything to protect our borders? The blood of further deaths of Americans is on your hands. I disagree with my colleague, my good friends on, on the right side. This is anything but a national security bill. Look at what's happening at the border. Look at what's happening to the agents that got bum-rushed in El Paso last night. Now, if, if you're willing, any, anybody that votes for this bill, you're saying, and I, for all the listeners, are you agreeing to $500 million for Jordan, including $150 million for border security in Jordan? Are you agreeing, to, do you like $125 million to help Egyptians attend college in Egypt? Is this where you want your money? Do you want a eight, do you want 286 million for Title X Title 10 family planning which is an abortion clinic? Folks, the list goes on and on. This is insanity. Here's what I call on here's the fix. I call on our speaker and he's the only one can do it to after we to vote this bill down take that mace down which has to be in place it's been in place for 182 years to have session uh, in the House of Representatives, cut the lights off, and until the Senate accepts a total shutdown of the border, until they accept a total H.R. 2, we don't come back. Why fund a government that's working against us? It is total insanity. It's expired. The gentleman from Texas reserves. Gentlewoman from Texas is now recognized. I yield to the gentleman from Ohio, the chairman of the Homeland Security Subcommittee, Mr. Joyce, for two minutes. The gentleman from Ohio is recognized now. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise today in support of the package of appropriation bills under consideration. As chairman of the Homeland Security Subcommittee, I'd like to thank the full committee chair, Ms. Granger, for her leadership in assembling funding packages that reflect strong Republican priorities. The crisis at our southwest border has raged under the Biden administration. More than two million migrants crossed the border each of the last two years. That is not sustainable. So this bill makes key investments to secure the border, expand detention, improve technology, and deter illegal immigration. Under this bill, we provide $500 million to reach an end strength of 22,000 border agents uh, consistent with H.R. 2. To counter fentanyl, this bill provides $305 million for non-intrusive inspection equipment at our nation's ports of entry. This bill ensures ICE has the detention capacity it needs to enforce the law by providing 41,500 detention beds. Without this funding, ICE would have released more than 10,000 current detainees who pose a threat to our communities. This bill also provides the Coast Guard with two fast response cutters to counter Chinese aggression in the, in the Pacific. Additionally, this bill fully funds the Coast Guard's military pay raise, keeping our promise of supporting our troops. Simply put, this bill ensures that men and women of the Department of Homeland Security 
who work tirelessly on our behalf have the resources and tools they need to protect this great nation. It reflects strong Republican priorities, cuts wasteful spending, and prioritizes securing the border. We cannot surrender this progress for a wasteful and harmful government shutdown. I ask my colleagues to support this bill, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields. Gentlewoman from Connecticut is now recognized. Madam Speaker, I yield one minute to the gentlewoman from Minnesota, the distinguished ranking member of the Defense Subcommittee, Ms. McCollum. Gentlewoman from Minnesota is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. While it's no secret that this appropriation cycle was tough, and as ranking member of the Defense Appropriations Subcommittee, Defense, I want to thank, really thank Chairman Calvert for working in a bipartisan manner to get the defense bill done. This compromise defense bill is focused on two things, national security and our service members and their families. This bill provides our service members with the training and the equipment necessary to complete their missions and come home soon and safely as possible. It supports military families with a 5.2 percent pay increase. It includes a, four, a excuse me, it includes a 5.4 percent increase to basic housing allowance. And the bill restores at least some funding for Ukraine through the Ukrainian Assistance Initiative. But the House must pass the Senate Security Supplemental as soon as possible. And I am glad to report that all the partisan writers that were originally in the Defense House bill have been removed. Madam Speaker, this minibus shows us that there is only one way to fund the government, and that's on a bipartisan basis. Full stop. Let's follow the example in the, the next appropriations time has expired. cycle. And I urge members to support the bill. I yield back. The gentlewoman yields. The gentleman from Texas is recognized. Yield 90 seconds to my friend from Georgia. The gentleman is now recognized for 90 seconds. Thank you. <clears throat> to my House and Senate Republican colleagues, it's time to put your vote where your values are. Because you can't claim to be a pro-life champion and then fund abortion, abortion travel and aborted fetal tissue research. You can't rail against President Biden's intentional illegal invasion and then fund the policies that are causing the chaos without assuming the same responsibility. Just like you can't flaunt your vote to impeach Secretary Mayorkas and then fully fund his salary and his destructive border policies. You can't defend America's Second Amendment liberties and then fund gun control by the CDC. And you cannot support science and protect young women and then fund transgender surgeries and fund educational institutions that allow biological males to compete in women's sports. And I don't call them men because they're not real men. Real men protect women. They don't use their superior strength to steal the honor, hard work, and achievements of women. You can't complain about the violation of America's First Amendment rights and then fund more disinformation government, governance boards and government by proxy censorship. And you cannot sound the alarm on our dire economic outlook and ballooning national debt and then rubber stamp spending higher than Nancy Pelosi's levels for FY23. And the list goes on and on. Republicans simply cannot righteously denounce Democrats' disastrous policies that are destroying our great country and then turn around and fund them. After all, if you fund it, you own it. But it's not too late. We promised the American people that we would fix these problems, not fund them. So I urge my colleagues to vote no on the swamp's second half omnibus. Thank you, and I yield back. Reserve. Thank you. The gentleman reserves now. Gentlewoman from Texas is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentlewoman reserves. Gentlewoman from Connecticut is recognized. Madam Speaker, I yield one minute to the gentleman from Texas, the distinguished ranking member of the Homeland Security Subcommittee, Mr. Cuellar. The gentleman from Texas is recognized. As a ranking member, I live at the border. I don't just go visit the border, so I know the border. This is a strong border security homeland bill that we passed in a bipartisan way, common sense way. This, money, this uh, bill takes away uh, all the poisonous riders, so it's only bipartisan riders. It adds the largest number of Border Patrol agents at 22,000 agents. It adds CBP officers at the bridges so they can stop fentanyl. It adds support staff so they can support the agents. It adds money to Air Marine so they can do the work and counter uh, drones. It adds money for the uh, TSA so they can have the pay equity. It expands, uh, it, it adds monies to the food and shelter program, which is important for the border community. It adds 
41,500 beds that are being used right now. That are being used right now, even up to 41,700 beds. It adds money for deportation when aliens don't have their, their rights uh, after they get their rights um, uh, process. Uh, it fully uh, funds the reunification efforts of families that were unjustly funded. It adds money to border patrol and adds money to I, Stone Garden. I yield the gentleman 15, 15 seconds. The gentleman okay. has another 15 seconds. 15 seconds. It adds money to Stone Garden so local law enforcement can uh, do the work. I would say, member, this is the strongest border security bill that we have, but it's fair. It is fair, and I ask uh, folks to support this bill. Again, I live at the border. I don't go visit. This is a strong homeland security bill. With that, I yield back. Thank you. The gentleman yields. Gentleman from Texas is recognized. Well, I thank my friend from Texas for his remarks, but I would just simply disagree. All we're doing here is adding beds that aren't going to be used. All we're doing is adding money for Border Patrol that won't be able to allow, uh, allowed to do their job. They will be processing more people and releasing them against the law under parole, uh, parole uh, policies that are damaging the country and that led to Lake and Riley's death. That's literally all this bill does. With that, I'm going to yield a minute and 15 seconds to the gentlelady from Georgia. Gentlelady from Georgia is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise in extreme opposition to the second part of the omnibus bill. No Republican in the House of Representatives in good conscience can vote for this bill. It is a complete departure of all of our principles, especially if you call yourself pro-life. This bill funds full-term abortion. This is not a Republican bill. This is a Chuck Schumer, Democrat-controlled bill coming from the House majority that is supposed to be controlled by Republicans, but yet our majority has been completely Members are reminded over to, to direct their remarks to the chair. Please. Madam Speaker, it is the will of our voters, and it is the will of Republicans across the country that this bill should not be brought to the floor, that this bill will, will absolutely destroy our majority and will tell every single one of our voters that this majority is a failure. This is the bill that the White House cannot wait to sign into law. This is the bill that rips our border wide open and tells every single person in over 160 countries around the world they can invade our country, they can run over our Border Patrol, they can run over our Texas National Guard, they can come in, rape our women, murder our people, and squat and take over our homes. This is an atrocious attack on the American people. The Speaker of the House should not bring it to the floor, and this bill should not pass. Reserve. Gentlewoman reserves. Gentlewoman from Texas is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentlewoman reserves. Gentlewoman from Connecticut is Madam recognized. Madam Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentlewoman reserves. Gentleman from Texas. Uh, I would yield one minute to the gentleman from Missouri. The gentleman is now recognized for one thank, minute. Thank you, Mr. Roy. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I think that this bill defies any kind of objective understanding of the reality of the situation that we're in. We're at $34 trillion in debt. It is the highest debt to GDP that we've experienced in the history of the United States of America higher than we experienced after World War II, and we just left a war. Today, we're at that same level of debt to GDP, and yet we're, we're facing potential wars. This situation is the greatest threat to national security that there is. And to add more debt onto, the, onto this nation is only risking us even further. Look, our border is the threat to national security, and yet we're doing very little to actually fix it in this bill. No matter how much we talk about some of the things that are in the bill, at the end of the day, you know, I hear expressions like this. Somebody up here, the swamp says people say, somebody's got to govern. Well, within that statement, therein lies the, the false pretense that government is the solution to our problems. Government isn't the problem. Thank you. Reserve. Gentleman reserves. Gentlewoman from Texas is recognized. Madam Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentlewoman reserves. Madam Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentlewoman from Connecticut reserves her time. Gentleman from Texas. 
I would yield one minute to my friend from Pennsylvania, Mr. Perry. The gentleman from Pennsylvania is now recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Last night when I was looking over the bill, I got a text with a film in it, a video clip of soldiers in uniform being overrun at El Paso, being overrun by illegal foreign nationals coming into our country, just running right over them. I don't know what their orders were. I don't know what their rules of engagement were. I don't know how anybody expected them to stop them, these people coming into our country wholesale. And what was amazing and astounding as well, Mr. Sh Madam Speaker, is as those folks all ran to the Border Patrol to come into our country illegally. Border Patrol being ordered by President Biden and Secretary Mayorkas to allow these people to come into our country. My friends on the other side of the aisle are going to say, well, we got more border, we got more beds, we got more Border Patrol agents. Those agents are going to process these individuals under the, into our country, and those beds are going to go unfilled because these people are coming to your town. Madam Speaker, this bill makes Americans pay for their own sellout, and I recommend that we all vote no. I yield. Gentleman Yales. Sir. Gentlewoman from Texas is recognized. Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. Gentlewoman from Texas reserves. Gentlewoman Madam from Speaker, Connecticut. Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. Reserves. Mr. <laughs> Gentleman from Texas is recognized. Yield one minute for my friend from Kentucky, Mr. Massey. Gentleman from T Kentucky is recognized. Today we're setting a dangerous precedent. We're suspending the three-day rule so that our constituents don't have time to see what's in this bill, but we know a few things that are in it. We know it spends too much money. We know it's got money to groom our children down to ages of 12 into being trans. We know it's got uh, funding for facilities that do late-term abortions. Why would Republicans vote for that? Because it's got a dangerous cocktail that the swamp has always served. And, and we're drunk on it today. What is that cocktail? Earmarks and budget gimmicks with a chaser of the fumes from DCA, the, the smell of jet fuel at DCA, because what are we going to do as soon as we betray Americans by passing this bill? We're all going to the airport and we're going on recess for two weeks. This is not the way we should do the nation's business. We need to preserve the three-day rule. We need to follow our own rules. We need to bring these bills through committee and do regular order. And I urge people to vote against this bill and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields. Preserve. Gentleman, gentlewoman from Texas, recognized. Madam Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentlewoman reserves. Gentlewoman from Madam Connecticut. Madam Speaker, I reserve the balance reserves. of my time. Reserves. Gentleman from Texas. May I inquire how much time is remaining? The gentleman has three and one quarter of a minute. Three and one quarter of a minute. 3.25. Three minutes, 15 seconds. Okay, great. I would uh, yield one minute to my friend from Arizona. Gentleman from Arizona is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, I'm going to be voting no for this, this bill. Um, first, I want to talk to my Republican colleagues. It's important that we understand that the American people don't expect us to win every time, but they sure as hell expect us to fight. And that's not what we're doing. We should not be fighting for this. This is garbage. The next thing I want to address real quick is to the American people Please pay attention to who votes for this and make sure when they come back to your hometown in your district and they talk to you at your Lincoln, next Lincoln Day dinner about fiscal responsibility, securing the border, if they voted for this, let them hear about it. Thank you. I yield back. Gentleman Yields. Reserve. Madam Gentleman Speaker, I reserve Texas. the balance of my time. Gentlewoman from Texas reserves. Gentlewoman from Connecticut. I reserve the balance of my time. Reserves. Gentleman from Texas. The gentleman from Florida a moment ago talked about the fact that we defund UNRWA and we defund some policies that are pernicious. I agree with him. It's a part of the process that we carried out last year when we set out to change this institution to return to some sort of regular order to have 72 hours to read bills, to be able to have single subject bills, to offer amendments on the floor to actually have an appropriations process. We passed seven appropriations bills off of the floor of the House. We passed three out of committee to the floor. We actually had some amount of debate. We were able to move things through. And we got some of our policy priorities. And we then sent them over to the Senate. And then what did we do? We walked away. And we went back to business as usual in the swamp, where a handful of people that they call four corners all sit back and decide for you. Not the people in this room as a body, 
but a handful of so-called cardinals. The same group that I heard guffawing in the back a minute ago. The same block of appropriators that think they're the ones that get to control the entire world and use our men and women in uniform as an excuse to undermine the national security of this country by spending money we don't have, by racking up debt to the tune of a trillion dollars every 100 days, while funding all manners of sins with respect to transgender surgeries, abortion, tourism, funding the World Health Organization to give away our sovereignty, funding open borders with mass parole that led to the death of Lake and Riley. Everybody who votes for this bill today, you own it. Don't go out and campaign this year saying you oppose this stuff when you write the check. Because that's what's happening today. Every single Republican, every single Democrat who votes for this omnibus spending bill today, they own it. They own the open, own the open borders. They own the woke military that we cannot recruit people to fight in. They own giving our sovereignty to World Health Organization and international bodies. They own more funding for the Wuhan lab. Yeah, that's all in there. They own it. We should vote no. You want to win in November? Vote no. I yield back. The gentleman yields. Madam the Speaker, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentlelady reserves. The gentleman from Connecticut is recognized. Mr. Speaker, 11,388 members have served historically in the United States House of Representatives. We are blessed. And what we are charged with is serving the American people. That is our job. It is not serving our individual philosophies, ideologies, or whatever it is that we believe. We need to govern on behalf of the American people. And I'm proud to have been working with Democrats and Republicans united to make government work for the people of this country. It's a bipartisan bill. It sides with hardworking majority of the Americans. It helps to lower that cost of living. It protects women's rights. It reinforces America's global leadership. And yes, it helps our communities be safe and secure. It is not about what we do, is not about those of us who serve in this chamber. It is about what we do on behalf of the people of this country outside of this chamber. This bill serves the American people, and it has Democrat and Republican support to move forward. We are six months into this 2024 year, we have been unable to do the work of the people because some people will hold us back. Again, our job, why we are elected, is to serve the American people. That's what we are charged with. Never forget that we are blessed to serve here. And we have a duty to perform and to do what is right. I urge my colleagues to support this bill. It makes sense for us to do it, and we do it because we represent hard-working families in this country who put their faith and trust in us to do this job on their behalf. I yield back. General Lady Yields. The gentlelady lady from Texas is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I urge my colleagues to support this bill, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentlelady yields. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and agree to Resolution 1102? Those in favor say aye. Those opposed say no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative, the rules are suspended. The, the gentleman from Texas is recognized. Request the yeas and nays. The yeas and nays are requested. Those in favor of a vote by the yeas and nays will rise, a sufficient number having risen. The yeas and nays are now ordered. Members will record their votes by electronic device. Pursuant to Clause 9 of Rule 20, this is a 15-minute vote on the motion to suspend the rules, which will be followed by a five-minute vote on the motion to recommit on H.R. 1023 and the passage of H.R. 1023 if ordered. This is a 15-minute vote.
On this vote, the yeas are 286, the nays are 134, two-thirds being in the affirmative. The rules are suspended. The resolution is agreed to. And without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, the unfinished business is the question on agreeing to the motion to recommit on H.R. 1023, offered by the gentleman from California, Mr. Peters, on which the yeas and nays were ordered. The clerk will redesignate the motion. Motion to recommit H.R. 1023, offered by Mr. Peters of California. The question is on agreeing to the motion to recommit. Members will record their votes by electronic device. This is a five-minute vote.
On this vote, the yeas are 206 and the nays are 211. The motion is not adopted. The question is on passage of the bill. Those in favor, please say aye. Those opposed, please say no. The ayes have it. The bill is passed. It, for what purpose does the gentleman from New Jersey seek recognition? On that, I ask for a recorded vote. A recorded vote has been requested. Those favoring a recorded vote shall rise. A sufficient number, number having risen, a recorded vote is ordered. Members will record their votes by electronic device. This is a five-minute vote.
On this vote, the A's are 200. On this vote, the yeas are 209, the nays are 204. The bill is passed. Without objection, a motion to reconsider is laid on the table. For what purpose does the gentleman from Florida seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I send to the desk a concurrent resolution and ask unanimous consent for its immediate consideration on the House, in the House. The clerk will report the title of the concurrent resolution. House Concurrent Resolution 100, concurrent resolution directing the clerk of the House of Representatives to make a correction in the enrollment of H.R. 2882. Question? Is there objection to the consideration of the concurrent resolution? Without objection, the concurrent resolution is agreed to and the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. The House will be in order. Members are encouraged to take their conversations off the floor. The House will be in order. Members are encouraged to take their conversations off the floor. And who's up first? The chair will now entertain requests for one minute speeches. The chair will now entertain requests for one minute speeches. For what purpose? 
The House will be in order. Members are requested to take their conversations off the floor. The House will be in order. Could do that too. The Chair will now entertain requests for one minute speeches. For what purpose does the gentleman from Montana seek recognition? Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in recognition and celebration of both National and Montana Ag Week. Food security is national security, and across the Treasure State and the country, farmers work tirelessly to keep food supply safe and plentiful so we don't have to rely on foreign nations to sustain our population. Agriculture isn't just an industry in Montana. It's